Begin today in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. As we come before the Lord this day, we ask his mercy and healing in our lives. You were sent to heal... Excuse me a second. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, may no earthly undertaking hinder those who set out in haste to meet your Son, but may our learning of heavenly wisdom gain us admittance to his company who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you. 
The Lord be with you. And with your A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. <clears throat> The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Behold, I am sending my messenger ahead of you. He will prepare your way. A voice of one crying out in the desert, Prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight his paths. John the Baptist appeared in the desert, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the, right, for, the, for the forgiveness of sins. People of the whole Judean countryside and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem were going out to, to him and were being baptized by him in the Jordan River as they acknowledged their sins. John was clothed in camel's hair and with a leather belt around his waist. He fed on locusts and wild honey. And this is what he proclaimed. One mightier than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop and loosen the thongs of his sandals. I have baptized you with water. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. Make sure right, <clears throat> right now that I get on the right page for next week. <laughs> First Sunday we've had this. <clears throat> in, um, a lot of times in graduate school or in theology, um, it's not uncommon uh, during your graduate studies toward the end, they have what's called J term. And it's where you go on a trip somewhere for, uh, along the lines of what you're studying and, and uh, get some experience in the place. And so in January of 80, December of 82, I went over to Europe with a friend of mine. And then uh, we were going to meet up for the J-term in Vienna, in Amman, Jordan, with the rest of our class, the deacons. And so it was January of 83 that I was in Amman, and from Amman, <clears throat> had to cross the Jordan River to get into Israel. And in 1983, you know, those countries had been at war forever, just about. But in 1983, there was a strict boundary there, obviously, and the boundary is the Jordan River. The Jordan River isn't as much bigger, it's, it's really, I, don't, I think the Red River is bigger than the Jordan River. <clears throat> and, uh, uh, so it's not a big river. And so we're going to cross from Jordan to Israel. And they are not friends with each other. And we could cross because we were Americans on a touring thing. So we're on the bus, the tour guide, and we approach the bridge, just a little bridge to go over to Israel. And as you get close to the bridge, on either side of the bridge are these big bunkers. And people in there with machine guns pointed toward Israel. <laughs> and then the bus gets halfway across the bridge and it stops and the tour guide gave us a patriotic uh, reflection on the joys and goodness of Jordan that he got off the bus and then the bus went the rest of the other half of the way and just before we got on Israel, Israeli soil there's bunkers there with guys with machine guns pointed back at Jordan and Israeli soldier gets on and checks our passports and everything and then they bring us around to where they check everything. We're still on the bus, and he, and he gives us a lecture on where we're at. They were now in Israel, and don't believe anything that they told you about Jordan. He said, because we are at war with them. And <clears throat> it's funny, there's a lot of Americans on that bus. And Americans sometimes are the most obtuse people. I mean, thick-headed. Uh, we think that the only thing that exists is America. Forget about the world being flat around. It's just, if the world ends at like California and New Jersey. <laughs> when it comes to Americans. So we get off the bus and you bring your luggage out and make sure, you have to make sure it's all unlocked. 
and then they put it in a grocery cart and they give you a big number matching that grocery cart and then you go around to another place and you go into like a little phone booth with curtains on both sides and there's enough space in there for you and one other person being really close to each other and so a person comes in from the other side and you're face to face and they start grilling you on why you are here and uh, decide if you're here for what you say you are or if they have any doubts then they go to further checking with you you can only imagine what that is if you're already face to face uh, <clears throat> so then from there then you go in and you get your luggage at once they search it it's on a big table so as we're going to do this two things uh, that i thought were hilarious happened one of these couples of Texans, he's a big old Texas hat, and their big luggage and the locks on it, and he doesn't have the key, and his wife doesn't have the key, and they're arguing with each other about where's the key, and the Israeli soldier in the meantime, uh, as they're arguing, goes back in, and he comes out with a huge key, a master key. Can you imagine? And he goes up to the luggage, and <laughs> <laughs> What do you know? They're unlocked. <laughs> and they're just looking... And he gives them their number, let's go around. And then as we're waiting, as we're going down the, the line, and they're taking our luggage one by one and searching it, there's all these guards there, and everybody's speaking Hebrew, and one of my classmates ahead of me is complaining about this line, and waiting in under this, and I said, I'd be careful, just because they're speaking Hebrew doesn't mean they have, don't understand English. And it gets to his luggage, and they open it up, and they hold it up and they dump everything out on the table and they take anything in there that's liquid or gel form and they open it, squeeze it all on top of his clothes. <laughs> and they finish and most people, they put it back in your, they wouldn't do that, they put it in your luggage. They finish with his and they just bunch it all up and they shoved it at him. And I said, I told you. <laughs> so it is, what does that have to do with this? Well, John the Baptist, this is the Jordan River that we had come across, the famous Jordan River, where Jesus was baptized and his ministry began. So it, the Jordan River was sort of that, that uh, dividing line between the Promised Land and not the Promised Land. And the people of Israel, Israel at the time were living in what was the Promised Land, but in a sense it hadn't become that, because even though they had King Herod, who was a joke, they were still under the rule of Roma, Romans, Rome, the Roman emperor. So they're not free. And John the Baptist comes along and he's, in a sense, really symbolically setting them free through baptism. Like he says, it's not baptism, it's just a surface baptism. But it's a symbol of being set free, repentance of sins. And it says, it describes him as coming you know, you always see pictures of John the Baptist, so wild hair and stuff. Well, he did live in the desert. He, he lived with the community, most likely there, of uh, Jewish monks. And it says he had wore camel hair, had a belt around his waist, and lived on locusts and honey. But you think that this wild guy living in the desert just fasted all the time. Well, no. The reason he explains what he's wearing is that's what a prophet wears at that time. That's a sign that they're a prophet. So John was dressed in his uniform. And he lived off locusts and honey because he was nomadic, living in the desert. The people in the desert lived like that. And they considered it very good eating. It a good, you had good protein and then the best of honey. And so it wasn't like he was starving out there. It was just that's the way nomadic people lived. So just letting people know, this is a real prophet. Listen to him. And then he says, you know, I baptize you with water. One who is coming after me, who I'm unworthy, untie his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. What's the difference? Well, you get water poured on you for both. But the difference is, imagine like if you took a plant, uh, you know, your favorite plant, whatever, and you take it into the Jordan and you get it watered and you wash it up and it looks just beautiful. And then you take it out and you plant it on this ground away from the river where there's no underground water source or anything. Well, the plant looks nice, but what's going to happen? It's going to die because it doesn't have anything interiorly that's keeping it alive. And that's the surface baptism. But baptism in the Holy Spirit changes who we are. 
It not only cleans up the outside, maybe, but definitely changes the inside. And, and like Jesus said, a spring rising up from within you. And so no matter where you plant that plant, it's going to grow and flourish because it has the waters from within that are feeding it all the time. And that's what we have. We have the power of the resurrection within us from the moment of our baptism. We are baptized and we die with Christ and we rise with him. We're a whole new being when we're baptized. We're a child of the king and children of the father. And, and uh, we walk in the power of the Holy Spirit. And like St. Paul says about baptism, the power of the resurrection already at work in, you who, in we who believe. In other words, baptism is a dynamic activity. But once we're baptized, that begins within us to configure us to Christ throughout our life, more and more moving us toward what it means to be fully alive in the kingdom of heaven. And so then the last hurdle to overcome in this life is death. Death that we sometimes are so worried about. Or, uh, Paul says, and Jesus said, that, no, that's, that's the last thing to keep us from getting into heaven is this body which has suffered under sin, the pains of sin. And so this body has to go away so we can have our resurrected body. So a lot of times when I go in the hospital, I, I, when I see somebody who's, who's dying, often I look at them and I think, the power of the resurrection is taking over in this person. That their body is actually starting to go away. And so that's why St. Paul can say, O oh, death, where is your victory? O oh, death, where is your sting? Thanks be to God in Jesus Christ, who is the resurrection and the life. <laughs> so, as having that power within us, I can say, it, it configures us to Christ, and ultimately, the ultimate is when this body goes away, and now we are free. But what happens between now, baptism, and then? Well, between baptism and then, we are very powerful people in Christ. We have the power of the Holy Spirit. We have the, and how do we exercise that power? Through prayer, uh, sacraments of the church, reconciliation, receiving the Eucharist, Jesus Christ himself for the journey. And so what we don't want to become is passive uh, in our life in Christ. Uh, see things happen around us and oh boy like for now right now all the political unrest in our country it's easy to feel uh helpless you know none of us are uh high up in policy well maybe some of you are i don't know but we can only affect so much in our life in our country and in the world we can affect more at family level but the most we can affect is our own life but they always say, well, in the political unrest, well, you have the power to change it. You can vote. And then, of course, that's a big question now, too. <laughs> so where is the power? Well, we have the power of the Holy Spirit. We can pray. And we don't have to, <clears throat> you know, wait until we have, oh, I've got to have this place to set aside to just be away from everybody and this and that, or I have to wait till I get to church and... No, we have the power of the Holy Spirit with us all the time. We can pause for a minute any time during the day and pray. Pray for our government. Pray for what's going on now. Pray for our family. Because we have the power of the Holy Spirit. So, I encourage you, you know, prayer changes things. And, and the, in the tradition of the church, the most powerful prayer is the liturgy. The Eucharist... Uh, the liturgy of the hours. And then St. Padre Pio says, outside of that, the next most powerful prayer is the rosary. Why? Because the rosary is a prayer of the body of Christ together. And we're praying with the Blessed Virgin, obviously. But we're praying to, th with her, we're praying to Jesus Christ and with him to the Father. And prayer, she, I remember growing up that... Uh, I forget which war it was in the beginning that uh, I suppose by the time I was a boy, uh, Korean War. And we had to have it every night after supper. 
kneeling down in the living room and praying during the Korean War. And then obviously during the Vietnam War, during the Pueblo incident. And so anytime there was great uh, disturbance going on in the world or in the country, we, for, we my parents always prayed for the rosary, but we as a family would do that. And uh, I remember one time, all of us kids were growing and out of the house and something was going on in the world. And I came home for something in the evening, in my parents' home, and I come in and here's my mother and father by themselves, kneeling on the stairway, praying the rosary for what was going on in the world. We have the power to change things. We do. We need to use it, though, or it'll get you all dead. We're very powerful. All of us have the power of the resurrection, and we are enabled by God through our baptism to do great things in prayer. <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me. And now let us stand and profess of our faith together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Now we turn to the Father of the life of the world to come and ask him to hear our prayers and petitions. So we pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, our Bishop John, and for all who hold and teach the faith throughout the world, we pray to the Lord. For all government leaders, for our president, our vice president, our senators, our representatives, our judicial branch, our state legislators, governors, mayors, and community leaders, we pray to the Lord. For the intention of this Mass, for the parishioners of St. Philip's and St. Anthony's, and for all our family members and those who have asked for our prayers, those for whom we have promised to pray, for those who have no one to pray for them, and for those who are in need of healing. Remember Broden, uh, who's recovering from his accident, that he continued to, the Lord just bring miracles in his life and bring him healing. We pray to the Lord. And for all who have passed from this life, that they may be rejoicing in the kingdom of heaven, the glory of God, we ask this through Christ, O Lord. Amen. And happy birthday to anybody whose birthday, this is a feast of St. Nicholas too, by the way. And happy birthday to anybody whose birthday is today. <laughs> Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Be God. 
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Be pleased, O Lord, with our humble prayers and offerings, and since we have no merits to plead our cause, come, we pray, to, renew, to our rescue with the protection of your mercy through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. And lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago and opened for us the way to eternal salvation that when he comes again in glory and majesty and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. So with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, John, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> Please stand. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. <clears throat> Forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not
Now our, oops. now our prayer of spiritual communion for those unable to receive communion this day or joining us on video. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never let me be parted from you. Amen. Please stand. Let us pray. Replenished by the food of spiritual nourishment, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that through our partaking in this mystery, you may teach us to judge wisely the things of earth and hold firm to the things of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. So, you know, I do, I do have a, a surgery date set with this nurse. No, it's <laughs> a joke. <clears throat> uh, right after Mass. Uh, anyway, this will be the third surgery in less than a year. Actually, if you count the one a year ago on November 1st, this is the fourth surgery since a year ago on November 1st. And they're going to do a total shoulder replacement. I think I mentioned that before of this shoulder. It's been operated on before. I've, uh, I've dislocated about five times and things and had surgery, and then I have, have another surgery, total replacement. And that'll be on December 17th, so a week from this Thursday. I'll remind you of the next weekend. So I might be out for a little bit. I, I'll have it on a Thursday. I don't think I'll be saying Masses the weekend of the 19th and 20th. Uh, Father Gellin will be here. But uh, I might be on some medication then, and I'm afraid of what I might say while I'm on medication. <laughs> so, I think I'll avoid that. Um, and a reminder that this week uh, is December 8th is the Solemnity of the Immaculate Conception, a holy day. And so there's a vigil mass here at St. Philip's at 6 o'clock tomorrow night for the vigil of the Immaculate Conception. And then, of course, Tuesday, the Holy Day itself, will be a Mass at 8 a.m. here. And then Tuesday night at 6 p.m., there will be a Mass at uh, St. Anthony's in Fairmont. So 6 p.m., Monday night and Tuesday night. Monday night is here. Tuesday night is at St. Anthony's. And 8 a.m. on Tuesday morning. I think that's it. Any other announcements that I'm missing? Anything? Okay. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord.